Yo, what's going on? My name is Sebastian Elkaby. You might have heard about the article, Notice the Black Artists, Your Services Are No Longer Needed. A very controversial article that I wrote uh, a few weeks ago. It was featured on Billboard magazine. Uh, I went on uh, Russia Today uh, TV. Uh, MSNBC uh, discussed it. A uh, very controversial article. So before I get into why I wrote the piece in the first place, uh, let me read just a little bit of it so you understand what all the fuss was about, especially for those who haven't read it yet. So, again, notice the black artist. Your services are no longer needed. Keep in mind, it's a satire, meaning it's not real. It takes truth and realities and exaggerates it. I need to explain that for all those people who actually thought that those were my personal feelings. Again, it's satire. Check it out. Dear black artists, we regret to inform you that the need for your services will soon come to an end as we enter a critical restructuring period. Fortunately, after having spent nearly a century meticulously studying your art, language, fashion, and lifestyle, we have learned enough to confidently move forward without your assistance. We thank you for your contributions, but have decided to make some necessary changes as a result of your decreasing value. Focus groups show that consumers are looking for more relatable images. While 2013 marked the first time in Billboard's 55-year history that there were no black artists topping the Hot 100 chart, this was a great year for us with Justin Timberlake, Robin Thicke, and Macklemore claiming the number one spot on the R&B and Hip Hop chart proving that market demands are shifting. Consequently, in the next few months, we will be gradually phasing out your positions as, as we finalize this reorganization. In the meantime, we ask you to continue with business as usual, training your replacements, Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber, until instructed otherwise. And this satire goes on and on and gets progressively crazier uh, as uh, as the letter continues. So what I did is I wrote the letter as um, a termination letter, as if an employer, in this case the music industry, was uh, retiring or terminating or firing black artists. Now, most people understood the satire, but uh, I got quite a few emails from people thinking that this was actually my thoughts or that this letter actually came from the music industry. Again, it's satire, meaning that it's an exaggeration of reality. Now, it all starts off well. Billboard magazine, uh, earlier last year, if I'm not mistaken, actually uh, uh, publicizing the fact that even they were surprised to see that in 2013, there were no black artists topping the Hot 100 charts. Doesn't mean that there are no black artists on the Billboard charts at all. We're talking about the Hot 100 charts, and we're talking about the lead positions for 2013. So, uh, as well, in the past few years, myself and so many other people saw this developing trend in terms of uh, uh, the popularity of black artists and how a lot of white artists, like the ones I mentioned, Justin Timberlake, Macklemore, uh, Robin Thicke, really started becoming the face of hip hop in R and B. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a problem with that. Can white artists rap or do R and B music? Sure, they've been doing it for years, right? Tina Marie, uh, Third Base, uh, the Beastie Boys. Um, you know, a lot of different artists. I can't even think of them right now. A lot. Uh, Michael McDonald, uh, the Doobie Brothers, uh, uh, Hall of Notes, right? So we can look at a lot of different artists and say, oh, they're white artists, but they're doing R&B, or they're rapping. The problem isn't white artists rapping or, or, or singing R&B. The problem is how the industry, the music industry, positions certain artists to become the face of hip hop or R&B. Now, that's the real problem. So it's not so much about the artists themselves. It's more about how the industry positions these people become the new face. Now what happens, the fear for me is that 
as time progresses, as time passes, as the years pass by, you're going to have younger generations not understanding the history or the legacy of black music because they're going to see R&B and rap as being uh, uh, something that white artists are now monopolizing. So that's the sentiment that I wrote the, uh, the, the article from, the satire from. Now, here's what's interesting. Billboard magazine, Billboard magazine, I'm sorry, wanted to do a story on it. Why? Because the letter upset so many people because it actually struck a, a nerve. It touched on a truth that many people have been afraid to speak on. Now, I know, and I won't reveal uh, any names, I know that people in the music industries, from CEOs to big name artists, agree with the letter. They've seen this trend developing in the past few years, but they're afraid to speak about it because they don't want to jeopardize their position in the music industry. They don't want to jeopardize their success. Me, I don't have anything to lose. I'm not uh, a superstar. I don't have a million, uh, a multi-million dollar contract or endorsement that I might lose if I speak up on this. So it's not a problem for me. But the amount of responses and feedback that I got saying that, you know, from artists and people in the industry saying that they agree that they've noticed this trend was overwhelming. That's why Billboard did a story on it because it came to their attention that uh, uh, the story had some truth to it. Uh, just recently, I was on the RT uh, Today, which is Russia Today, on a show called Breaking the Set with uh, the CEO of Rap Rehab and my friend Paul Porter. And we discussed what's going on in the industry in terms of uh, cultural misappropriation. You know, and again, it's a hot topic. That's why people are talking about it. That's why it's become uh, 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 a hot issue, if you will. So again, it's a satire touching on a, a, a reality that's taking place in the music industry. Do I actually believe it? Do I stand behind uh, 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 what the uh, letter says? Of course not. This is just taking a concept, taking an idea, and turning it into a satire to drive a certain point home, to make the point that hip hop and R&B needs to be preserved. I can't tell anybody not to do it, especially me. But we have to be serious. We have to respect the architect. We have to respect the founders. We don't erase history. We can't overlook the, uh, the pioneers of the culture. Absolutely not. And if that is allowed to happen, then uh, we're in trouble. So that's uh, just a little bit of me sharing my personal thoughts on why I wrote the piece. Uh, you can Google it if you haven't read it. I'll include a link as well. Um, a few links, a matter of fact. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. All the info should be included at the bottom of the screen. You can check out raprehab.com, which is the, uh, the website that I write for. You can also go to my own website, which is sebishiphop.com, and uh, you'll see a lot of different articles there. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to hit me up. Peace.